In today's video, I'm sharing all the details on the dishwasher in my Jayco Pinnacle. Did you just say a dishwasher in your fifth wheel? Yep, that's right. I added a dishwasher to my fifth wheel. Why in the world would you need a dishwasher while you're camping? Who does that? Listen, I get it. Initially, it does sound a little bit over the top. But let me tell you why I added a dishwasher to my RV. And first, this is really the biggest reason. I use my RV primarily for vacationing. And so when I'm in vacation mode, I want to spend as much time as possible with my family, you know, relaxing, soaking up the great outdoors. And so when I'm in vacation mode, the last thing I want to do is be stuck at the sink doing dishes. And when you've got a family and you're cooking three meals a day, that can generate a lot of dishes. So it's super convenient to just take those dirty dishes, put them in the dishwasher, push that start button, and then they come out clean and dry. It's a really nice luxury, I get it. It's not a necessity, but it sure is nice to have. But the second reason is, and this was really a bonus that I discovered while researching the dishwasher, and that is that it only uses 1.7 gallons of water per cycle. Now I haven't actually tested that in real world use, and I can imagine that's probably for a specific cycle, but let's just say we were to double that and say it consumes three gallons of water per cycle. I don't think if I were to wash a full load of dishes by hand, I don't think I could get under three gallons of water use. And the big benefit of that is, you know, oftentimes we're staying at a campsite where we have water and electrical hookups, but not a sewer connection. And so of course you're watching how much water is going into your gray tanks. And you know, doing dishes, even if you're trying to conserve water, at least for me, can really add up to a lot of water going into your gray tanks. I mean, definitely more than three gallons after washing the dishes for a typical meal. And so that's really what sold me on the dishwasher is that it solves two problems. It uses less water and it saves you time. I think the expression is to hit two birds with one stone. All right, so that's why I decided to add a dishwasher, but let's talk specifically about how complicated it is here in my Jayco Pinnacle. Now, the Pinnacle and the North Point, they all come standard with dishwasher prep, at least most of the floor plans, I think. But what does dishwasher prep actually mean? And it's kind of like how most RVs are advertised with washer dryer prep. And then you go to actually add a washer dryer and you discover it's a little bit more involved than just physically moving it in. And that goes for most brands. So let me tell you what Jayco does to advertise the Pinnacle and North Point with dishwasher prep. First, they plumb a dedicated hot water line with a shutoff just under the sink here, and it's really just teed off the existing hot water line for your faucet. And then second, they also stub a drain Y off of the sink drain that leads down to your existing gray tank, and they just put a small little temporary cap over it. Third, Jayco puts a standard 120 volt outlet, just like this one here, under your sink for the dishwasher to plug into. And then last, Jayco sizes this space under your sink here. You know, it comes standard with a giant horizontal cabinet door, but they size it such that you can remove that cabinet door and then it gives you space to slide that dishwasher into. So is it as easy as taking off the cabinet door, making the connections, and then sliding in your dishwasher? Well, not quite. And let me just say that I may have chosen the harder path to get my dishwasher added as I think Jayco actually intended for folks to add the Vesta brand dishwasher rather than the Fisher Paykel dishwasher that I added. And the reason I say that is if you actually measure the opening, the raw opening of the cabinet door before making any modifications, it kind of seems like it lines up better with the Vesta dishwasher as far as a direct fit. The Vesta model is just under 22 inches wide, whereas the Fisher Paykel that I've got here it's just under 24 inches. So if you measure your opening, if it was built like mine, you probably have an opening to accommodate a 22 inch wide dishwasher. However, I will say that it appears Jayco had the foresight to design the opening with multiple brands in mind as they did build out the opening almost with these little side pillars or blocks that make the opening smaller than the actual frame of the cabinet. And so what this means is you can actually make the opening larger to accommodate the Fisher Paykel, the 24 inch wide, simply by removing the blocking, the columns on either side. So again, I needed to clear 24 inches to get my Fisher Paykel in here. And I did that by removing a single column off of this right side here in my opening. And so yes, technically that means that the dishwasher is not perfectly centered up 
under the sink, but you're not gonna notice that. I mean, I'm giving you some different views here in the video and really I forget about it and I'm the one who did it. You really just don't notice that it's an inch and a half to one side. And the primary reason I did this was not so much a time savings, but I wanted to have clearance here on my left side as that's where the power and the water and the drain, they all come out kind of the back left corner here on the dishwasher. And so I wanted to have some clearance on my left side there. So again, you can see that I removed a column here from the right side and that enlarged my width across here to 24 inches to clear the Fisher Paykel. Now, as far as the height, the Fisher Paykel is 16 and an eighth inch tall, whereas the opening that Jayco left here was actually 17 and a quarter, which by the way, that's the height of the Vesta brand dishwasher. So that would have left me with an inch of space kind of an inch gap above the dishwasher and that would have been really ugly completely noticeable and so my solution was to simply raise the height of the dishwasher up from the bottom to fill that void with some of the spare trim pieces that i took out when i removed the cabinet door there and so you can see that's exactly what i did and i left the center open here and kind of trimmed it off at 45 degree angles and i did that for a couple reasons you know first off i wanted to have it open for ventilation just with the heat that comes out from the dishwasher when it dries them but then i also wanted to be able to see if there was ever any kind of leak or anything going on underneath here i, I didn't want that water to be trapped inside the cabinet i wanted there to be a clear path for it to get out. So I think it turned out pretty nice. I mean, it looks really finished and trimmed off. And you know, as you're standing, you're never gonna notice this extra trim that I've added down below here. All right, so the opening is just half the battle. Then I had to support the dishwasher, which by the way, the weight is I think about 70 pounds if I recall. And so I built up from the bottom with some skids, just two of them for the dishwasher to rest on. And I'll throw up some pictures that I took during the install so you can get a better idea. But you can see there, there's two skids that I added. They're the same height as my front face trim on the bottom. They added, and that's really what the dishwasher is ultimately resting on, what's supporting it. And then the dishwasher itself, it fastens to your cabinet along two places on either side. And so next I needed to build out kind of some blocking for the sides so that the dishwasher has something solid to secure itself to. And what I found in the process was the 120 volt outlet that Jayco prepped for the dishwasher, it is on this side of the cabinet wall. And I discovered it really should have gone on this side of the cabinet wall because it really kind of impeded on the space that the dishwasher needed to slide in there. And so I did have to relocate that 120 volt outlet, but that was pretty easy. I didn't even have to shut the power off. I just kind of slid it through its hole to the other side and then fastened it. And that's what's behind this access panel that you're seeing. And this is again, the left opening of the uh, kitchen island here. Otherwise, other modifications that I had to make. So I did make an opening toward the back of the cabinet here in the middle section where the dishwasher goes that would then spill over into the access space here on the leftmost cabinet in the back. So basically there's this little access panel here in your left cabinet and that's where the drain and the water connections and everything's hidden. And again, that's where I relocated that 120 volt outlet. So the opening that I made, it's completely hidden. You're not gonna see it there, but it just made it a lot easier to get the water and drain and electrical from the dishwasher onto this left side, which is where everything marries up to the actual connections. And that was about it on the physical modifications. So it was definitely a bit more involved than I anticipated, but I think it was mainly due to me choosing the Fisher Paykel model over the Vesta. Now you might be wondering why did I choose the Fisher Paykel over the Vesta? And I guess for me personally, I was more familiar with the Fisher Paykel. I've seen it in a lot of Class A coaches. And overall, I've heard very positive feedback. You know, it's not that I've heard negative feedback on the Vesta brand, but I suppose the lack of familiarity on the Vesta is ultimately what sold me on the Fisher Paykel. Plus I do like the drawer style of dishwasher as opposed to the more conventional fold down door like the Vesta has. And the only other thing I can think of that I did have to purchase was a small three quarter inch garden hose adapter to three eighths inch thread. And that was for the main water supply here on the Fisher Paykel. You know, most dishwashers have a three eighths inch water supply connection, whereas the 
water supply, the hot water supply that Jayco plumbed with the shutoff was a three quarter inch garden hose thread, kind of like the, really exactly like your washer dryer hookups. And so that piece was readily available at my local home center. Again, it was just a three eighths inch to three quarter inch garden hose adapter. And then the drain connection from the dishwasher went right on to the drain wire that Jayco plumbed. And so I had no issues there. So that's basically it on the install. You know, I'd say if you're pretty handy, then go for the Fisher Pick L's. I think it's a nicer product in the end. But if this all sounds intimidating, then the Vesta probably would be easier to install. And while I don't have any experience on it personally, I'd imagine it performs just as well too. Which by the way, if you're watching this and you have experience with the Vesta, brand dishwasher and another rig or maybe your current one do me a favor and let me know in the comments below what you think of the Vesta model but with those installed details out of the way let me give you some close-up views of the finished product and let me just point out first how Fisher Pekel has this nice kind of rubber flap that goes all the way around the perimeter and it just really finishes off and seals that opening between your cabinet frame and the dishwasher. So I really like that, how clean it looks. Then it's got a real simple control panel here, display, readout, and then just your four buttons across the front. I also like the overall design of the front panel. You know, there's no bar sticking out that's gonna get you in the knee here. It just has a real simple recessed handle to open the drawer with. Uh, which by the way there's some kind of almost like a soft close effect or some kind of spring as when you get the drawer almost all the way shut it just kind of sucks it in and keeps it shut there so it's got a real nice firm tight closure and i have not had issues in transit you know while moving with this drawer wanting to come open. So whatever mechanism they've got inside there, it's you know real firm and tight and it keeps it shut. And here's some close up views with the drawer fully extended. So you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like inside. It's fairly intuitively laid out. You can see on the left side, you've got some flex storage here with these little plate racks that can fold down. Pretty similar to what you probably have in your house. And then of course you've got these little shelves against the far left side against the wall you can fold them up out of the way if you've got something bigger or fold them down and that seems to work good for lids and cups and smaller items then you've got those same fold down shelves here on the right side and then on the right side on the bottom this is more what i would term as you know kind of your fixed plate rack storage where your plates are going to go and you can actually remove these if you needed to it's not quite as simple as the the right side just kind of folding these up and down but this is removable if you needed to do something really large and maybe have you know both sides clear and open so that is kind of nice that they designed that in and then of course you've got your your standard silverware basket here it just kind of rests on a little platform there they've got the little inserts for your you know your spoons and knives and forks to keep them all from hitting each other and keep them separated of course you can remove those which we've done on this opposite side uh, some of our knives are a little bit too big the bases of them where you grab onto to fit through those little holes there so lots of flexibility just like you would expect there and then over here you've got your soap dispenser so this is against the front of the drawer the inside and you just flip that little switch down there and it pops open so you've got your main wash and your pre-wash there for your soap uh, now one thing that kind of surprised me a little bit is the manufacturer only recommends using powdered soap here in the dispenser and we're just used to using liquid in our house and so that was just an adjustment we had to make here is get powdered soap instead not sure why they do that. You know, it must have something to do with the mechanism that releases that powdered soap into the, the wash area. But just keep in mind, you do want to put only powdered soap in there. The, they do tell you if you want to use liquid soap or even those little uh, kind of pouches, the little pods, that they do make a little kind of an insert that snaps into one of the silverware compartments here. And then that kind of rests almost like a little basket to hold that liquid soap or the little pod. So you can do that. It comes with the dishwasher, but for us, we just went and got some powdered soap there. And then below here, this is where your rinse agent is gonna go. So that's kind of nice, just like your dishwasher at home. It's gonna have a rinse agent to help get all that soap residue off. There's a little red LED light in here that shines when it's empty and it has some kind of sensor then when it's full, that light goes off. So super convenient that you can do that and keep everything nice and full. Then you'll notice underneath the tray here where all your dishes go, there is a standard agitator just like you would have on your dishwasher at home that spins with all the jets and everything. And then you can see the drain area and everything else 
down there that stainless steel colored area all right i know what you're thinking already you want to know what it looks like loaded up you want to know can your dishes fit inside this compact dishwasher or how much can you cram inside a smaller dishwasher like this so i've brought some items out just to give you a quick sample of what that looks like first up we've got this large dinner plate and i think this is a fairly large size plate you can see it measures about 11 and an eighth of an inch across and so we'll put this here on the left side that's going to be your deepest section that goes down the furthest in the drawer and so you can see it fits just fine we're touching just a little bit there on the right side and notice how we can still close the drawer so that's good we have probably about oh, a quarter inch gap here from the top of the plate to the top of the drawer and so as long as your plates are let's just say 11 and a quarter diameter or smaller you'll have no problem fitting them in here in this dishwasher skin 11 and a quarter is that key number how about some silverware so i've got some uh, basic knives and forks here so we'll start with the fork put those here in the silverware compartment no problem at all how about the butter knife so this one's got a little bit bigger on the the width here at the bottom you can see this however is not quite going into the little compartments and that's why we've removed the other side of the silverware basket and gotten rid of these little inserts so no problem right you just take one side off you can fit those bigger butter knives and other utensils on that side how about a coffee mug all right so i've got this coffee mug i'd say this is a taller style of mug it is about i think let's double check about four yeah four and a half inches tall let's see if this can fit on top of the rack so it looks pretty good but if we close it ooh, yeah it's gonna kiss just a little bit so we can't do that so again four and a half inches tall a little bit too tall we're gonna have to put this one on its side here or we're gonna have to put it somewhere down lower here so i'm gonna put it like that so it drains nicely how about a skillet so let me pull out this is going to be a smaller skillet this is a i believe it's a nine inch uh, an eight inch actually eight inch skillet so for this we're gonna to have to actually fold down the plate rack on this side kind of the flex space so i'll do that as well and i'll just move this mug over there and now we've got space to put our eight inch skillet in no problem at all how about some glassware you got here kind of a glass lock container great for leftovers so that fits just fine there no problem in fact it clears under these little shelves on the side there so that's pretty handy how about a 24 ounce yeti mug so you can see we can put that back there no problem at all we could put it up on that side of the rack again no problem at all so lots of options there for a 24 ounce yeti cup and last how about we try a cookie sheet all right so this cookie sheet let me get you the measurement on him so he is about 14 by 12 all right so we got a 14 by 12 cookie sheet and you can see this one it'll definitely fit in there but you're gonna have to pull some other things out and i could probably put it that direction and then i'd have to take out my skillet and everything else on that side but you can see it is possible to fit something like that it's just gonna have to go flat because again it is too tall to fit and close the drawer successfully so hopefully that gives you kind of an idea of what you can put in here you know for us we're a family of four and typically we have no problem with a normal meal of putting all of our dishes that we use both to eat off of and cook with and fit them all into the dishwasher and run it so we might be running it you know two or three times a day all right so let's talk about how well it actually works so i've used it a few dozen times now and I've been very pleased with the results so far. I mean, they always come out clean and dry. That's the main thing, right? I will say one tip that I've noticed is that you should limit how much soap you put in the soap dispenser here, you know, especially if you're doing a smaller load. I think because it's conserving water, if you put too much soap in there, it's not gonna get all that soap rinsed off and you're gonna have kind of a, you know, a film on your dishes there. So just limit how much soap you put in the soap dispenser there. You're gonna get really good results there. They, like I said, they've always come out nice and clean and dry at the end of the cycle. And, you know, I'm putting the plates, the silverware, everything else in dirty. I'm, you know, scraping off the excess food, obviously, putting that in the trash, but then just throwing them all in uh, with all the, the grime and everything. And they, they always come out clean, so that's really good. Like I said, it does heat them at the end of the cycle to dry them off all the way. When the cycle is over, usually I'll just kind of pop this open a couple inches just to let that steam and humidity kind of vent out of there. Which, by the way, if you're wondering how long 
the typical cycle is is just over two hours you can see the normal there is at 135 minutes now as far as the noise level i'll get a cycle going here and then we'll check back later to demonstrate the sound level but you basically just close the drawer and then on the front panel here it's going to default to the normal cycle and you just press the play button there and then the wash is going to light up and it's going to start the cycle so we'll check back here in just a minute but let's talk pros and cons likes and dislikes while that's getting started so first on the likes i like that it does exactly what i expected it to do that's nice right i mean it gets the dishes clean it conserves water i can fit just about anything into it as i demonstrated and ultimately it saves me time right and that's part of the main goal in installing a dishwasher i also really like the overall design and styling you know it's not too flashy and it just kind of blends in with everything else that's already in the kitchen now after installing the unit i must say i was impressed by all the engineering especially with the way the drawer pulls in and out you know if you think about it that means there's electrical water supply and then your drain of course that are all kind of flexing in and out as you pull the drawer in and out each time and so the design really seems robust. It seems like it's gonna hold up over time. I was also impressed that when you remove the entire drawer for the install, or if you gotta clean it later, it's actually pretty easy, surprisingly. So again, just really well thought out design there. And last, I like that it's pretty quiet. You know, I'd say it's about as quiet as your dishwasher at home, if not quieter. And now that it's been running for a little bit, let me turn the mic around and then I'll pull out the DB beater so you can get an idea of actually how loud it is. So I've got the mic turned around now and I'll come in closer so you get an idea of what it sounds like. And then we've got the DB meter out here. So you can see right around 64 decibels when it's running, when I'm not talking. And just as a baseline inside the RV without the dishwasher running, it's about 62 decibels. So pretty quiet, really like, just like the one in your house. You know, I think the loudest that you're gonna hear it is when it starts to drain, when the pump turns on and drains into your drain, the Y that's, you know, hidden in the cabinets. And that's where you're gonna hear that water kind of gurgling going down the drain. And that's probably the loudest thing that you're gonna hear while it's running. Now I'm going to pause it here just to cover a few dislikes here. So you can just hit the play pause button on the front there. That'll pause it and then you can open it back up. So you can see it's been running now for about 10 minutes or so. But first dislike has to do with what I mentioned before on the soap dispenser here. You know, I really wish they would have designed it where you could do liquid or maybe even the pods. Again, the manufacturer recommends powdered soap only. Not a huge deal, but we're just accustomed to using liquid personally. So that is one con, one dislike. I also wish on the silverware basket, you know, these holes, these dividers seem pretty big, but like you saw when I demonstrated, we can't get our butter knives into these little dividers. And so I wish they made maybe one side of the dividers a little bit larger than the other. You know, we just had to remove the entire dividers from this side, but it'd be nice if perhaps the slots would be a little bigger on one side than the other to accommodate larger things like those butter knives. Another con is that it is a little bit pricey. You know, I figure a typical, a decent household full-size dishwasher for the average person is gonna be in the $500, $800 range for a good one. And yet here, this compact Fisher Paykel model is $799 and it's half the size. You know, I think some folks actually put these in their house and do two of them kind of stacked on top of each other. So obviously you're paying a premium price for that compact size and the way they put everything together in a complete package. All right, last three cons or dislikes that I'm gonna share don't have so much to do with the dishwasher itself, but more the layout here in the pinnacle. So first one is that the dishwasher is directly under the sink. And this, I suppose, could be a pro or a con, depending on how you look at it. But when the drawer is all the way out, as you can see right now, you kind of have to straddle or hurdle it in order to reach into the sink, you know, kind of to stand off to the side in order to load dishes. It is nice that the dishes then go directly into the dishwasher. They don't drip on the floor if it was off to the side. So it is kind of a pro and a con, I guess. But you know, I could see if someone's shorter or smaller that it might be harder for them to reach into the sink and then pick them up and put them into the dishwasher. So just something to consider. And I mean, really to be fair, it has to do with the layout here on this beautiful island. You know, you've got a, a sink that's centered up in the island, which is really nice because it gives you then equal countertop on both the left and the right side, which is really nice. 
I mean, if we were to rearrange this and have the dishwasher say off to the side of the sink, maybe at a waist height, well, then you're gonna have to slide this sink all the way over here. So you'd lose all this countertop space on your left side, and then you'd have much more counter space on your right side, and then room to put, you know, a tower with the dishwasher off to the side there. So that is a kind of a pro and a con, just a think about, you know, it really comes down to personal preference, I'd say. And, you know, personally, I kind of like the sink in the middle because then you get that equal counter space on both sides. The only other option I can think of is they do make some narrower counter height dishwashers that you might be able to fit into a bay off to the side that's about this width here. I think I saw that in a Durango Gold fifth wheel if I'm not mistaken. But let me know in the comments what you think about the dishwasher placement. Do you like it directly below the sink? Would you like it off to the side? Another con I can think of is that you do lose a good bit of storage by putting the dishwasher in. Now for those who own a Pinnacle or North Point, you know that under the sink, under the big horizontal door, Jayco puts in from the factory a really nice drawer, a pull-out drawer that pulls out of that storage space. And I love that. I think that's great use of space, gives you really good access. So obviously you're gonna lose all that when you put this dishwasher in. Now for me personally, we don't full-time in the unit, we just use it recreationally. So I don't really miss that space. You know, I still have enough space everywhere else, but I could see where if you're full-timing, in a unit like this, this is the 37 MDQS, and the kitchen already is kind of limited on cabinet space. I could see where you may say, you know, I'd rather have that storage space down below the sink than opt for the dishwasher. So just something to consider. Now on that note, I will say, those of you who have this floor plan, you know that Jayco puts the countertop inserts that cover the sink there. They have a little insert that goes into the drawer that pulls out, and that's what was in that drawer compartment there. And so I did have to relocate that. For me, I just took those little inserts and put them here next to the couch on this little lift up storage compartment. So you can see the little countertop inserts and that works out great for me. So that's what I chose to do. And the last con has to do with the pullout sprayer on your sink faucet. So you know with the pullout sprayer, you've got a hose here that runs all the way through the neck and then down underneath your sink and kind of loops back around and hooks up to after where the hot and cold water mix, right? And so then the water goes through the mixing valve up through the neck. Well, in that loop of that hose that goes underneath your sink, there's a weight, kind of a black plastic weight that's in the middle and that pulls that hose back down so that when you pull out this sprayer here, it naturally wants to get sucked back into the neck. And so I had to change the location of that weight naturally because that excess hose, that loop would fall where the dishwasher starts. You know, that hose would wanna loop down and the dishwasher takes up the full depth of the space there. So I had to change the location of that weight so that the weight would fall about here on top of the dishwasher instead of, you know, underneath the dishwasher. So no problem, right? So I did that and it seemed to operate just fine. No, no issues at all. Then we were taking a trip a few weeks after I did all this and we noticed the water flow on the kitchen sink would be restricted, not always, but some of the times. It's almost like you know the water pressure at your campsite was not so great, but it was fine in all the other fixtures. So what I noticed is that when we would have the hot water on, it would be more restricted than the cold water. So it dawned on me that you know inside this hose, this nice braided hose is a rubber inner hose and what was happening is that hot water was softening that inner rubber hose and then that excess hose remember that is just kind of laying on top of the dishwasher now in the cabinet it was getting kinked basically and then reducing and restricting the water flow so i had to come up with a solution to that and what i did over here on the left cabinet i went in and added a bungee cord so hopefully you can see this on video but if you can see that purple bungee cord that's right here so it starts here on the anchor point and then it goes all the way back and picks up that excess slack on the sprayer hose underneath the sink and so by adding that bungee instead of the excess hose just kind of slopping and laying flat on top of the dishwasher getting kinked up now that bungee cord kind of pulls it off to the side and you really don't notice anything when you're pulling out the sprayer it still feels very normal you know, pulling out and that weight grabs it. And then of course the magnet holds it in place. So that was the solution that I came up with and just something to be aware of if you're gonna put the dishwasher in underneath the sink. All right, last question, would I do it all over again? And yes, I absolutely would. I mean, at the end of the day, it accomplishes all my intended goals. And really I'm especially thankful that Jayco provisioned the flexibility 
you know, with the size of the opening there. So you can choose whether you want the Fisher Paykel or the Vesta model. And there's probably other brands out there that you could fit as well. And, you know, with the exception of me having to move the 120 volt outlet to the opposite side of the cabinet, really everything else that Jayco did on the dishwasher prep was spot on. Well, that's all I've got on this dishwasher here. I hope this video was helpful. And if you have any questions or I left any details out, be sure to let me know in the comments below. But hey, do me a favor and let me know what you think about a dishwasher in your RV. Is it on your wish list or do you think it is excessive? Let me know in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching.